Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I want to try to, oh, you know what? There's too much reflection on these glasses. Okay, let's start over. Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I want to try to answer the question, why is abstract art or abstract paintings and specifically, uh, why are they so expensive, right? And if you look at some of the most expensive paintings that have ever sold in the world, most of them are art or abstract paintings. And you look at them and you're like, why did that sell for so much? You know, there's paintings that were solid white paintings or solid black paintings, and these paintings have sold for millions of dollars. Or if you look at the work of Cy Twombly, uh, it's just a bunch of red scribbles, and, you know, maybe I'll put an image on screen. But, you know, there's a lot of paintings like that, where you look at it and you're like, this is worth a lot of money. And a lot of people even say that about Jackson Pollock's work. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a fan of Jackson Pollock, so I would defend him, of course. But you know, looking at, you know, just a bunch of lines, you know, again, we always come to that argument of, I could do that, anyone could do that. And, uh, you know, people say, well, why is it so expensive? Well, I've kind of distilled it down to three factors, at least in my own opinion. Uh, but based on my own work, but also the observation of looking at the artworks that have sold. So these three things, I believe, is why abstract art sells for so much, why it's so expensive and how you know artists can command such high prices. So we're gonna go over those three topics right now. So the first topic, uh, or for the first reason that I believe that abstract art is so expensive or why you can sell it for so much money, the first part is the materials. So if you sell a painting, if you make a painting, let's, and we're, we're gonna stick with paintings because that's my specialty. So if you make a painting with cheap materials, you know, it's not fair or even justifiable to sell that painting for high prices. Now, could you do it? Yes. Have people done it? Yes. But deep down, I don't believe that it's fair to charge the same price for a painting that was made with cheap materials as I would uh, better quality materials. You know, it's kind of like those materials don't have the same quality as the materials that you would spend more money for. For example, if I buy paint from say Walmart or you know from a uh, just a regular craft store where you know maybe a bottle of or a tube of acrylic is two or three dollars, right? But then I also buy another tube of acrylic that's a higher quality uh, for eight or nine dollars. Sure, you might get the same amount, but the the difference is going to be very vast. You see, if you use a cheap acrylic paint, uh, that paint tends to not be as shiny or have as much luster. It looks dull and flat and, you know, kind of uh, plasticky. Whereas a, a higher quality paint is going to have a higher luster to it. It's going to have a higher shine. It's going to look more vibrant as well. It's going to retain its color, its color fastness. It's going to retain a higher amount of that because of the pigments and the binders in that. And that's another thing is that, you know, cheaper paints tend to have more binders in them. So that's why it looks so much more like plastic or that's why it looks so dull because once those pigments dry out, if there's less pigment, then there's less of that vibrancy left over. So, you know, if you create two identical paintings, let for example, I made this painting right here in a video and I made it using cheap materials. I used uh, paint that I got from Walmart. Now the the painting might be fine, right? You might look at this painting, and go, oh, it's kind of cool, you know, it's a cool painting, I'd buy that, whatever. But the thing is, is that if you look at this painting, the painting is, the paint is very flat, okay? Now, again, the painting itself might be okay, but the materials used were cheaper materials, and maybe those materials will fall apart, uh, maybe they'll deteriorate faster, or again, they just won't look as good as uh, materials that you spent more money for. So. You know, a lot of these artists who are, or are, you know, selling their paintings for a lot of money, you know, even today, even just paintings that sell for thousands of dollars, they generally use either a lot of materials or they use high quality materials and the cost to make that piece is pretty high. Even for me, a regular sized painting, let's say uh, a canvas that's three or four feet wide, right? Generally not on sale, those canvases can run anywhere from 60 to to $100 or more, right? So let's say on the high end, I, I spent $100 just on canvas alone. And then let's say I used five different colors and I tend to use gloss enamel. A can of paint for me is about $16. So, 
then you know we bought five cans of paint so that's roughly eighty dollars so that's a hundred and eighty dollars just in paint then okay you know we also have to buy the materials and uh you know for creating the the painting so let's say we did a scrape painting the materials to create that painting uh were another twenty dollars so we're at two hundred dollars well that's not including shipping so if i'm charging for shipping uh then you know, I have to include whatever the cost is. And shipping a four-foot painting is not cheap. You know, it's it's bare minimum $100, but even more than that. So usually between $100 and $200 for a, a painting that size, if not more. Just depending on how it's sent. That's like the, the cheapest bare minimum uh, cardboard box, protected cardboard box, uh, you know, sent whatever the cheapest uh, mail rate is, okay? So let's say it's $200. For a painting that size to ship all right so right now we're at a cost of four hundred dollars just to make one painting just one and that's you know uh a four foot painting which is a decent size but again that's not also including the time that it takes for me to create that painting and it's also not including small things like maybe the shipping materials that go inside the box uh, or shipping insurance or, or things of that nature, processing fees. You know, there's a lot to go into uh, all of that. So let's say all said and done, like let's say we just we sold it at cost with shipping included, um, maybe $500. Okay, so I would have to charge $500 for one painting that was four foot by four foot just to break even. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand that the cost of materials to create a single painting, they add up. And, and you know, yes, I might be able to reuse the, the shipping materials or I might be able to reuse the paint. You know, maybe I didn't use all the paint. That's, that's all fine and dandy. But in order to create that first painting, I had to invest that money to begin with. And not only that, that's just one painting. If I make sequential paintings, yeah, I might be able to use the paint again uh, or some of the shipping materials, but I'd have to buy another container to ship it in. I'd have to buy another canvas. I'd have to, you know, set all that up again. Again, you kind of have to factor in your time as well because you have to not only make the piece, but, you know, list it somewhere for people to see. So, and again, I think a lot of people don't understand that there's a lot that goes into creating art and, and paintings, especially they are expensive to make and to sell. And, I, you know, I, I have a lot of friends and family and I, I love them and God bless them. But, you know, they just don't understand that they want to buy a painting from me super cheap for, you know, something that size. They want to buy, you know, a couple hundred bucks, maybe, maybe a hundred. Yeah, I've had people like really lowball me and I'm like, look, I care about you deeply, but the cost alone to make it just isn't there, right? So, and if I'm not shipping, yeah, I'll cut them a deal. If I'm not shipping the painting, you know, I'll cut it down to cost uh, without shipping. But again, my point is, is that the materials to create paintings adds up. So when you're looking at some of these paintings that sell for thousands even nowadays, and not even just the, the ones that have sold for millions, nowadays painters who sell their paintings for thousands of dollars probably use a lot of materials because there are paintings probably that they made that they couldn't sell because I don't know about you, but there are paintings that I can't, that I make, that I throw away. And I, th I think this is more common in abstract art as opposed to like realism or naturalism or, or anything like that where you're making a painting that represents something because you can kind of go over those with fine details over and over again. But see, the trade-off with that is that you're spending more time on one project. With abstract art, abstract art is easier to create. It's also easier to mess up. So again, you're investing time and money into creating paintings that I I, I would say probably, I throw at least, I throw away uh, probably twice as much artwork than I sell, at least twice, but probably more. I've never actually sat down and looked but just to give you an idea. All right, so we've kind of gotten all that away. I've kind of gone on a rant. So let's kind of come back to it. So that was number one, the materials. The second thing is the piece itself and the, the physical appearance of the piece. And, and the reason I say this is because your art is worthless if nobody likes it. Okay, and, and that's not to bash any type, anybody's type of work. I'm sure there's a buyer for any kind of art, artwork out there somewhere, right? There's, there's probably at least one person on earth, if there's seven plus billion people, 
there's probably at least one person on earth that would buy your artwork. Maybe not at the full cost, um, but that would buy your artwork. You know, a lot of the pieces that I sell that I'm, you know, I'll be surprised by some of the pieces I sell. When I sell a piece and I'm like, oof, thank God somebody bought that because I hate that piece. <laughs> but they, they get that piece and they're like, oh, I love it. I love it so much. It's perfect, all these things, right? And it's so great to hear that because even if you don't like the piece, you know, maybe somebody else will. But coming back to that, the physical appearance of the piece makes a huge difference. And so, you know, with some of these paintings that sell for, you know, millions or thousands, obviously, even if you don't agree with the work, it resonated with somebody, okay? And so part of the, you know, being able to sell it for such a high uh, price tag is, you know, how it looks. And so some, I think, I am being very honest here, I think that some artists just get lucky in that regard because they make a style of work that people tend to gravitate towards. And I think that some of like the best-selling abstract artists that I know of, they tend to make um, pieces that they, they're just cool to look at. Like they're very pleasing to the eye. Like, you know, they're, they're line paintings or they're, you know, certain squares of colors or something. You know what I mean? It's, it's something that isn't so off the deep end that it would like turn most people off. It's things that kind of has a, a mass appeal. But they're lucky in the regard that they, they have a style that people just kind of gravitate towards. So that's kind of part of it is the is your style and I wouldn't tell you to change your style for anyone else my only point is that people are tend to gravitate towards certain things like abstract landscapes I would say that land abstract landscapes probably sell more than anything else as far as abstract work goes because there's so many abstract landscape painters but not only that abstract just looking at abstract landscapes you know they're very calming they they're very simple to make they're very calming. You can put them in most spaces and some of them might make a, a statement, but a lot of them are just great for background artwork. So it makes sense, you know. So part of it is the, the way that the artwork looks. It's the style. So let's just say the style of the artwork also plays a large role in that. If you make, a, you know, really just paintings that just have a lot of like color going on or different shapes and you know, or, uh, you know, contrasting colors that don't really go together, or maybe you have one style underneath and then like a different style over. I'm not saying that stuff can't sell, not saying it can't work. My point is, is that a lot of the artists that sell a lot or have sold for a lot of money tend to have a distinct style or a style that people tend to gravitate to. That's all I'm saying. All right, so the last part of this, the third part, is the artist notoriety. All right, so obviously we know that a lot of the most expensive paintings in the world are done by people that we recognize, like Jackson Pollock. You know, he has one of the highest selling paintings ever. Rothko's got some, uh, Basquiat's got some. So my point out of all that is that these are artists that are well known. And at the time, now think about this, it's a little different now than it was, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago when abstract was kind of becoming a thing, you know, in the 40s or 30s or 50s, you know, in that, you know, 20 years or whatever. When these artists were kind of coming up and, and becoming famous, a lot of the work was very expensive because it was unique. So back then when those artists were coming up with their methods and they were the only ones doing their methods, uh, they sold for a lot because they were unique. Nobody else was doing that. But now fast forward, you know, 70 plus years and we have so many copycats of other styles that it's hard to look at a painting that say, I do it, a Jackson Pollock painting and then you put an actual Jackson Pollock painting. You would see differences if you're used to looking at it. But if you have never seen a Jackson Pollock painting and you looked at one of the ones that I did that was in that style, you may not know the difference. The point is, is that there aren't as many distinct styles. A lot of styles nowadays are either replicas of old styles, replicas of current styles, or remixes of styles that are there where it's kind of a crossover, right? Now, there are some unique artists and there are some, you know, pieces or styles out there. There are pretty unique, but the the thing with with now, you know, as opposed to back then is there's not people doing as many you know, individually unique things that nobody else could claim as their own. Now, it's more about the notoriety of the artist in how well they're known. 
Uh, how many exhibitions have they done? Have they done, you know, art school? Have they sold a lot of paintings? Have they sold paintings into museums or galleries or, you know, expensive uh, private collections? So nowadays, it's more about the notoriety of the artist, just kind of how well they're known, but in a different sense. So it's not so much about the unique style of that artist, as opposed to that artist and how well people know them or how well they're sold. And honestly, I mean, People only buy, uh, you know, if they usually know the artist. It's no different than saying actors, right? So if you have a new actor that's just coming into Hollywood, just breaking into, you know, movies or shows or whatever, if they're not well known, they're not going to get paid as much as, say, The Rock, who commands, like, I think it's like $20 million per movie. So he can command that because he's well known. He's worked his way up. But, you know, Jimmy John, you know, if he, I'm just making up a name. I, I had Jimmy John's for lunch. so. Uh, but if you just had like a regular guy named Jimmy uh, who was just getting into Hollywood, you know, hadn't had his big break yet. He's probably, even if he's in the same movie, he's not that guy. You know, he's just a person in a movie that may or may not get paid. But he's got to work his way up. It's no different in the art world. It's no different than in any industry. You have to work your way up and you have to be known. It's kind of like YouTube, right? So I'm here and I'm gaining notoriety, but I still have to work at it. You know, I'm, I'm further along now than I was a year ago, but that's because I put in the work. You know, people kind of know who I am and they start asking questions now. And, you know, they, they have I have some level of expertise. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but, you know, in my experience, I am. And so my point out of that is that art is expensive because of the notoriety of the artist. So it doesn't really matter if maybe they had that unique style that nobody else was doing or if they've just sold a lot or been in the media or been doing art for a long time. The notoriety is probably the biggest piece of that. This is why you can look at paintings and be like, why did that sell for millions of dollars? Because that artist uh, you know, had some level of notoriety for one reason or another. And so that would kind of conclude um, this video and, and the point that I'm trying to make. You know, it's easy to look at these pieces and be like, I can't believe that sold for millions. You know, I could do that. Well, you could, but you probably won't sell it for millions. I can almost guarantee it. Not, not saying you can't, you know, everybody, you know, maybe gets a 0.1% chance where they get lucky. It's just like getting struck by lightning or winning the lottery. It does happen. <laughs> but you know, for most people, it's not going to happen overnight. And that's because you have to build up to that. So, you know, what I would challenge people with, if you want to, you know, make more with your art, uh, first off, use the best quality uh, products that you can get your hands on. Listen, if all you can get your hands on is cheap dollar store art or, you know, or I'm sorry, art supplies uh, or, you know, Walmart or, or just low tier craft store supplies, do what you can okay do the best with what you've got but also be cognizant of what you're charging for those materials okay i think it's fine to make art with cheap materials as long as you're charging a fair price for the piece that's coming out of it okay that's all i'm going to say um next you know your style so the biggest thing with style is that people either love it or they hate it. And they can kind of know, just looking at like a dozen of your paintings, if they like the style or not. Now they might know off the first one, but if you are always changing your styles or have a bunch of different ones, then it's a little harder for them to gauge kind of your work. So generally, you know, that it would take kind of 12 different paintings for them to kind of get an idea of the capacity of what you can do. So look at that aspect of it and say, you know, how can I kind of narrow down the styles that I do or make that style your own? You know, how can you really go in on that one style and just really own it so that people kind of see it? And part of it is not even just the style itself, but people seeing that style over and over and over again. So think about this. You know, when I, before I got into abstract art and, and appreciated it, I was like most people. I just saw it and I thought, okay, that's whatever. And I had even seen Jackson Pollock's work before I was an artist and thought, okay, it's a bunch of lines. It's so interesting that how I've seen it before in my life and didn't care. But once I had an appreciation for art, I saw it in a whole different light, right? So sometimes people just have to be exposed to that technique over and over and over before they buy it or even just appreciate that technique. So 
you have to create more art and you really have to hone in on the styles that you do. You know, maybe you just do one, maybe you do a few. It doesn't really, you know, it's really your call. Um, but that's what I would say is just kind of getting people to really see that style because listen, I'm sure there's people out there that would appreciate it and would buy it. You just got to get it in front of the right people, okay? Lastly is notoriety. Like I said, you just have to be known. I mean, it's really hard to sell anything or even, you know, it's hard for those artists. I'm sure there's artists out there that are making art very similar to the art that's being sold for thousands or millions of dollars, but nobody knows who they are. So why would anyone buy that art from that known no known artist when they could buy a Rothko because they know that, you know, it's the only one in existence, but you know, there's not going to be anything like it. it it's just so we're buying a name. It's the, it's why you would buy, you know, maybe a Honda over a Lamborghini if you had the money for either one, you know, it's, it's the name people. A good example is, you know, people who buy Android phones versus people who buy iPhones. It's the name, you know, you're buying into that brand. So they're both phones. They both, text and they both call and they both have apps and one you know might do one thing that the other doesn't do but the point is is that you're buying into the brand you're buying into a name so that name means something and and that is the same reason why these artworks sell for for thousands if not millions of dollars so that's it uh thank you for the watching the video i know it's kind of a different video and just a little bit of a rant but i just saw this question and i really wanted to answer it at least in the best capacity that i could but anyways guys i will see you in the next video probably a painting video and i uh, hope you have a good rest of your day take care god bless see you then bye guys <music>